It looks like Tom is having a hard time getting his job done, and he's even more concerned that his boss might ask him for more edits. Hey, what's going on, everyone? My name is Ali, and in this tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to turn your scene into a night mode. And so before we dive deeper into our tutorial, as always, I've got an example that I wanna share with you. So let's go ahead and watch it together and then come back into designing. Ugh, I've been working all day long on this project and it never ends. I wonder how long should it take to finish it? It's getting late night. I think I should sleep now and maybe tomorrow I will have a chance to get it done. I just hope my boss won't have to ask me for edits. Now, I'm sure you've noticed the little details that made the scene pop out, and those details are the light reflections of the MacBook that Tom is working on, and the other laptop in the back of the scene on his desk. Those little details make a huge difference in the viewer's experience because they seem little, but they really make a huge difference because they can get your videos to look more professional and engaging. And it's pretty obvious that when you have Tom or any character and you turn your scene into a night mode uh, where characters are working on laptops or MacBooks or looking at their phones or even uh, on their PCs, it is very obvious that there's got to be some kind of light reflections and maybe some shadows as well. So that's exactly what we're going to learn in this tutorial is how to turn your scene into a night mode. You're also going to learn how to get Tom to uh, start by sitting on his bed working on this MacBook, and we're gonna to learn together how to get him to turn from sitting on the bed into sleeping. And so before we dive deeper into this, I've also got a surprise that I'm going to reveal towards the end of the video. So keep watching until the end and let's have fun creating. First thing is first, I'm gonna start by deleting this so we can start from scratch. And then I'm gonna go into my backgrounds and go to uh, 3D. Then we're going to pick up the bedroom that we need to start with. So drag and drop it onto the scene just like that. And then I'm going to extend it in the timeline. So we're gonna keep this whole thing for 20 seconds like this. And our next step is to go into the character creators, uh, pick Tom, drag and drop him onto the canvas. You're more than welcome to try any character you want. Just follow along step by step and you can use any character you want but know that the only ones that are gonna work exactly how you're gonna uh, see them in this video are the 3D creators because they have 360 degree uh, rotation, uh, which gives you a lot of flexibility, unlike the other 3D characters. All right, now we've got this covered. What we wanna do next is we want to go into uh, the settings on the right panel for Tom and then scroll a little bit down and find where it says properties, click that. And then what we wanna do is we uh, need to flip Tom into the other direction. So we do this horizontally. And then I'm also gonna choose one of his uh, presets just to you know blend in with this uh, night mode uh, scene. So I've got this design, the one that you've watched already in the video. And I'm gonna change his action from idle to working on MacBook. So I'm gonna scroll through and then find where it says working on MacBook. I'm also going to extend this guy a little more, maybe for about 10 seconds or so. And then we want to add another action. So we're gonna click on add new where it says add new actions. And then this time we're going to choose sleeping, right? The next thing we wanna do is we want to disable start and end animation uh, for the working on MacBook. And then we want to disable the end animation for the sleeping action because we want Tom to stay sleeping the whole time until the end of the video. So how we do this is very simple where it says working on MacBook on the character's track in the timeline, we click that to open up the little panel right there. And then where it says disable start, we turn that on as well as disable end. And then we also need to click on the sleeping um, uh, button that shows on the character's track as well to open up the little uh, panel. And then we want to disable end right there, right? Once we do that, we want to drag Tom and then position him on the bed right there. We're also gonna need to click on the rotate button that shows above the character uh, right there to get into the rotation mode. So then we can simply just rotate him to make sure that he is going to be looking the, you know, in the right angle, uh, sitting on that bed just like that. Once we're done, we need to click on the rotate uh, button again to exit the uh, rotation uh, mode like this. And we may wanna scale him down just a little bit like that, something like this. And he looks just fine. And then the next thing we want to do is extend the sleeping action. Make sure that this guy is lined up perfectly with the background, 
just like that. And then what we want to do next is uh, we're going to move our playhead right at the very beginning of the sleeping action. Because this is what happens. He gets off, like he throws the MacBook, MacBook away like this, and then he gets off of it, then turns into sleeping just like that. So as you can see right now, it looks funny because he's sleeping in the air, right? And that's just unnatural. So what we're going to do to make it look really natural is we're going to have our playhead right on the little square that separates between the working on macbook and the sleeping action then we're going to select our character click on add animation above the timeline right there and then from the properties we're going to choose three properties these are going to be position scale and we're also going to do a character view and then we want to click on the easing tab and choose linear for both in and out now the best speed for this type of animation to get him to turn from sitting on the, the bed into sleeping is to uh, keep the animation for seven frames or eight frames i guess so what we're going to need to do is we will use our four uh, frame forward buttons on the timeline right there uh, we're going to click eight times so one two three four five six seven and eight and then we're going to zoom into our timeline drag the second keyframe to where our playhead is at just like this make sure it is selected and turned into blue and then all we're going to do is we're going to drag the uh, playhead forward in time just like this and simply just resize tom first of all like this to make sure he's in the correct size on the bed we're also going to need to click on the rotation or the rotate button above the character again just to get him to look in the right angle sleeping on that bed so just make your adjustments until you feel that he looks just right. And then when you're done, you want to click on the rotate uh, button again to exit the rotation mode. Make sure that you keep fine tuning the position of him and the size if you want to. And then when done, go back and select the second keyframe again, just to be sure that he's just gonna be there exactly where you want him to be. So now when I move my playhead forward in time, look at that. He's, uh, he turned from sitting on, on, on the bed into sleeping right there got it so let's just go ahead and watch this from uh, you know a little bit early in time right there while he's still working on the macbook press play and see what it looks like so there you go he's uh, still working on his macbook then he's just going to turn and sleep on the bed just like that all right everything looking good so far now we want to turn this scene into a night mode um, but there's one step that we need to do as well, which is adding a screen on this uh, laptop right there on the desk to make it look like it's turned on, it's got something on it, right? So we're going to go from the very beginning of our timeline, and then we will uh, make another duplicate of our background. So we're going to do this by uh, hitting Control or Command D on the keyboard to make a duplicate. We'll, we will then drag the background on top of the character's track just so we can only see uh, the background. And then from there, we can also drag Tom right there and uh, choose our preset. Uh, then I just click on the preset uh, button on the right panel, uh, select the same preset right there, just like that. And then I'm gonna choose his position basically where I want him to be in this scene. So I'm gonna resize him like this and then keep him onto the right side to, or towards the right side of the scene just like that and then when uh when done then all i got to do next i think i'm actually going to have them right um on top of the screen or the laptop screen maybe a little bit bigger just to he can hide the uh, laptop screen just like that okay and then when we're done we just need to um, select the character along with the background right click and then group these guys just like that and then we're also going to need to add a uh, a rectangle to create our mask for the laptop screen so in order to do that you just need to hit the shift and the letter r on your keyboard then you want to uh, decrease the opacity a little more just like this just to basically choose the position of or, or what you want to have inside the mask just like that and as soon as you're happy you just go back into increasing the opacity all the way to 100 and simply selecting the rounded rectangle along with your group right click those and then choose mask right there now we have our scene mask so that's basically what we what we did we simply created the screen for the laptop and then you're going to need to resize it like that to try and make it fit into the laptop screen so we're going to try and resize it and make it really small but just like that you can still see that it's still not a good fit for the laptop screen 
So our next step to make it fit is we're going to use the distortion feature. Where can you find that? It's the, the icon that shows above the character right next to where it says open group. You click that and this will open up the distortion feature um, editor for you that allows you to drag the dots around the background and make it fit into the laptop screen just like this. So you just keep adjusting it. Um, and make sure that it's uh, going to be fitting in the laptop screen just like that. And then once you're done, you just click uh, the uh, distortion button again to exit the editing mode and then go back and there you have it. Now we have our screen or laptop screen ready for us to use. We want to make sure that this guy is also uh, extended in the background all the way. You can see the group is already extended, but if we open the group, we select it and then we click on open group, we can see that the character is um, is not there. So we just want to make sure that we keep him the whole time uh, right until the end like this. So make sure that he's lined up with the with the background. So he's uh, he stays um, idle that way. And then once we're done, we click on where it says back to main timeline, just like that. And then we are all set. Next, we want to create our night mode. And so how we're going to do this, we're simply going to grab a rectangle. So I'm going to hit the, sh the shift key along with the letter R on my keyboard to grab a rectangle like this. And then I'm going to scale it up all the way to make it a full width. And I'm going to go into the settings and change its color from this one into a darker blue color, just like that. Next, we want to make it blend in with the scene to give us that night mode. So how we're going to do this, we still have our rectangle selected. We go under settings and find where it says blend mode. We could select that. And then as soon as you open it up, it shows you the, um, the preset settings. Once you start hovering over the different effects, you can see the different effects that, you know, that you can apply. The one that we're looking for is called um, hard light. So we're going to pick that. So this is what it's called, hard light right there. So we just pick it up uh, like this. And then we want to stretch out the rectangle layer in the timeline and line it up with the rest of the layers just like this. Now, I might want to change the, um, the blue color of the rectangle if you want to. It's totally up to you how you want to do it. I mean, maybe you can make it a little bit lighter if you want to, just like that. Or if you want to make it really dark, I mean, it's up to you how you want to do it. But try to make it a dark blue one so that it looks or gives you this night effect that we want to apply so we got that covered now it's time for us to create the light reflection of the macbook uh, where he's working on and the other one that's on the desk right there so in order to do that for the one on the macbook we're going to need to grab a, a circle so we're going to hit the, the shift key on the keyboard along with the letter c to grab a circle then we're going to change its color from blue to white just like that and we're going to turn it into an oval shape so we're going to you know drag it from the right side like this from the editor just to make it an oval shape like this and uh, i'm also going to you know try and resize it just to position it to position it right above uh, tom's body right above the macbook screen and uh, maybe i'm going to make it a little bit bigger like this and maybe i also want to rotate it a little to the right just like that and then what we need to do next is we want to go to the effects and components tab on the left panel, open that up, and we're going to grab the blur effect onto the oval shape. So we drag and drop it on there, and then we can just increase the strength from the preset settings that shows above or on the top right side of the screen, just like that. So we can make it like this to create that light reflection. Uh, so I have it set to 318, right? Then the next thing we want to do is we want to click on the settings tab so we can decrease its opacity. And for this one, it's gonna be 17%. So you wanna make your opacity uh, down to 17% so that it kind of looks like that. So now if we if you go back, you can see it, you know, it's taken effect. Um, in the previous scene, it looked a little bit brighter. So maybe I'm gonna to have to increase the, the opacity just a little bit for this guy. So maybe we can go for 25%. Again, try to play with it until it, it makes sense to you just like that, and then fine tune it, you know, uh, to fit onto uh, Tom's body, uh, face and body as well. So you're just gonna need to, you know, maybe scale it up a little, just like that, like this, and it just looks fine. Now we want to extend it, uh, extend the layer of this circle or oval that we created and uh, drag it all the way, line it up with the rest of the layer. It's very important that you rena rename your layers just to say organized. So we might want to go ahead and do this. So I'm going to right click the background and then call this BG for uh, background. 
And then the other group uh, right there that, that we have, we're going to right click that and rename it and also call it uh, laptop screen right there. And then for uh, this uh, blue rectangle that we added to make it a night mode, right click that and also call it uh, night mode effect. And then finally, this guy, we're going to right click it and then call it uh, Tom's light reflection. And then what we want to do next is we want to create another light reflection for the laptop over there. So to do this, for this one, we're going to need a rectangle. So I'm going to hit the letter. Um, I'm going to have to the, hit the shift key along with the letter R on my keyboard to grab a rectangle. I'm also going to uh, uh, make changes to it. So first things first, we need to go on to the settings under on the right panel. We open up the color settings. And I'm going to need to make this transparent. So how do we do this? We simply drag the second circle right there for the transparency, just to turn this into a transparent rectangle like that. And then where it says border color and border width, this is um, this is what we're going to play with. So I'm going to open up the border color and then make it white right there. And for the border width, I'm going to go with uh, something like uh, 19, like that. Yeah, maybe nine or maybe 20. And I'm also going to extend the, the track or the rectangle layer all the way to line it up with the rest of the layers like this. Then we're going to go into the blur effect again and drag and drop it onto this guy like that. Now we have our preset settings open up on the right panel on the top right. We just need to increase the strength, the strength of it like this. So something like that. And it just looks fine. Don't worry, you know, of the way how it looks like once we resize it and make it smaller, it's going to be more obvious. You can see now it's becoming more obvious because we are making it smaller. So I'm just going to position it right on the, the uh, laptop screen right there. I'm also going to, you know, make it more rounded. So I'm going to create, you know, drag the uh, the dot one of the dots around the corners to make it more rounded like that. And for the opacity of this guy, we're going to decrease the opacity and go all the way to something like. Um, you know, 19% as well, or maybe let's see how that looks like. So let's just go back into full width to see how that looks like. Uh, yep, I think it's just fine. Maybe I'm going to resize it just a little bit, make it, uh, you know, smaller than that, something like this. Uh, then I can check it out and see it for myself. It just looks fine to me. I'm happy with that. Then now if we just uh, start pressing play to see how that looks like. And there you go. So Tom is now working and his uh, MacBook, then he's gonna turn into sleeping after he finishes uh, working like that. But then as you can see, we still have the light reflection of this guy is right there. So for this one, we need to make sure that we just keep it for a certain time. So I'm gonna expand the timeline a little bit more and I'm gonna show you how to you know, work this out as soon as, uh, you know, this turns into a night mode. Obviously, the scene is not going to start with a night mode from the beginning. So we're going to go back from the very beginning of our timeline. Then we're going to select the um, night mode effect layer, which is the rectangle that we use the blend mode on. Then I'm going to go into motion right there to add a fade in animation. So I'm a, where it says in, I'm just going to choose fade and then I'm going to choose fade in like that. So we can start with a daylight and then it turns into a night mode. Then all I'm going to do is I'm going to drag the fade in animation button on the layers right there so that it kind of like starts, you know, almost towards when he's about to finish, uh, you know, work. So something like this, so we're going to go about, you know, eight seconds or so like that. So if I go back and then press play, this is what it's going to look like. It's going to turn into a night mode, you know, a little bit by bit like that. There you go. And it just looks fine that way. Now we want to adjust the fade in as well for the light reflection for the MacBook, right? So what we're going to do is we will need to copy the fade in animation that we created by hitting the control uh, C or command C if you're on a MacBook uh, or OS. You simply want to uh, go onto the circle as well and then control V or command V to add the same or to paste your fade in animation just like that. So if we go back and then press play, now you're going to see that both are fading in nicely and it looks really professional when it's done just like that.
Got it. Same thing. You may want to do this as well for the one that's on the laptop as well. So you're just going to copy the same animation, fade in, control or command uh, C, and then paste it onto the rounded rectangle as well. So they all, you know, fade in at the same time. And then we want to make sure that, you know, once the once Tom turns into sleeping, we want to make the light reflection just go away. So as soon as we just find a spot, as soon as he drops his MacBook onto the floor like that, right? That's basically when we, where we want to, you know, take off the light reflection. So we're going to need to do is uh, simply select the uh, Tom's light reflection rail layer, which is the uh, oval that we created. We're just going to shrink it down a little to where our playhead is at like this. So that when he goes into, you know, sleeping, we will not have the light reflection anymore. So let's go ahead and start again, watching this from the beginning. Take a look at that, what that looks like. And uh, there you have it. This is a much professional view of a night mode and how you can really make your scenes uh, look more engaging and professional. And it's, uh, it's just easy as that. So I hope you found this helpful. Now, as far as my surprise, I'm actually giving away this template. So all you gotta do is click on the link in the description, download the link and um, you know have it as your own. Uh, thank you so much for watching and be sure to watch my latest two tutorials about getting Tom to walk in different directions using the character view animation. And then I have another tutorial that also teaches you how to make Tom enjoy his adventure inside Create Studio 3. Uh, and until then, I'll see you on the next one. Me